Have you ever been reading a celebrity pastor's blog posts or listening to a famous Bible teacher and something jumps out to you and you're just like, how am I the only person seeing this thing? Why isn't anyone talking about it? Well, you're not alone. Welcome to Underdog Theology. This podcast is about looking at what's happening in evangelicalism. I'm talking tweets, I'm talking books, blogs, videos, all of it, and judging it according to scripture. Whether that's reacting to celebrity pastors, teasing about the latest ridiculous battle in the culture war, or just having a little bit of fun together, this show is for all the folks who feel like they're on the outside looking in, who feel like they don't have a voice, who feel like they're an underdog. Welcome to Underdog Theology. What's going on, everybody? You already saw me, but I was wearing a different hat. You wonder how I did that? It's right here. <laughs> I have multiple hats just sitting around. Welcome to the end of the world stream. It's the end. Everybody knows it. We've written the songs about it. Now it's time to live it out because the solar eclipse is here. I feel like it's like princess bride <laughs> it's like andre the giant <laughs> he's here for us all <laughs> solar eclipse it's coming for us oh we're gonna have fun today we're talking about the wackadoos i'm talking about the crazies i'm talking about the the people who are just like you know what this is the end you know they they've sold all their stocks they bought all their robes they're outside right now waiting to get beamed up. Uh, you know, they don't want to wait inside because you don't want to hit the ceiling, you know, hit your head on the ceiling while you get, you know, while you go up, you know. Did you like that joke? Uh, it's not my best. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun because we're talking about the solar eclipse because we're doing all the things it's. It is going to be fun. We got 44 people here live. I don't know how many likes, but here's the deal. We are trying. I am trying to get the likes up and it is working. The last like four weeks that I've been talking about like, hey, can we get up to 100 likes? You guys have done it every single time. So let's do it again. Join the 100 like army. It's like the seven nation army. But it's, you know, it doesn't have as good of a jingle. Maybe I'll work on that. Maybe I'll make my own little jingle uh, for a hundred, hundred like army. Uh, but you know what? Let's talk to the hundred like army and let's have everybody just chime in. Look, look at this. Oh, we have the chat. It's working today. We have some tech issues going on. I know I talk about this every stream that I do. We had some big ones. I, I want a big one. Uh, we had some big tech issues. <laughs> I don't know why I have a stream deck full of sound effects <laughs> because all I do is make my own. Uh, but we had some we had some tech issues on the last stream. Uh, we're probably going to have a few today. I know there's one, guys. No, like we we're gonna go to Fundyville later, but we can't do the penalty box today because for some reason my computer refused to accept any data from any of my other devices. I was like sending the pictures to use for the penalty box. And it was just like, we can't do this. This is too much. I don't know. The solar eclipse is like stressing out my computer. Um, but you know what? We're going to get through. We're going to get through. You know why? Because we got Wendy here who uh, uh, says, I liked all, all right already. Like, so you're already part, like maybe the sergeant. We can give out some roles here. Uh, and I know she's a woman. But, you know, maybe she's in a leadership role here at the 100 Like Army. So what, Sergeant Wendy West has already hit the like button. We've got David Collins is here. We've got Heidi hopping into the chat. And, you know, let's remind ourselves as we're in the chat to be kind and speak up. Guys, we don't have like that crawling text. I made graphics. Um, <laughs> Carol says jingle bells. What's going on? We got Kip. Who is the woke Christian saying, hey, Dean and dogs? We got Carol. You had big ones on Friday. I know. I know. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't really know what happened, to be honest. I think it was the stress of having multiple videos. But I don't know. 
I don't know. Uh, but you know what? Hopefully it doesn't happen today. Uh, Jeremy says, I withhold my like uh, till Dean says my name. Well, Jer, I, uh, I said your name. Or I'm sorry, Jeremy Collins. Should we go f- super formal? Pastor Jeremy Collins. <laughs> Dude, how formal do we have to get? Uh, Johnny Appleseed is here and says, wake up, sheeple. I mean, we get a red cow and a red eclipse and coincidence. Coincidence. And on, you know, like tonight is the is the championship of uh, uh, of college basketball. So, like, there's there's a lot of important things happening today. This can't all be a coincidence. One shining moment. That, that solar eclipse is one shining moment. Right? Is, is this thing on? <laughs> All right. um, Sam says, a total eclipse of my heart. <sighs> Trying to get me to sing on a stream. I Do you realize how hard it was to not come out with it's the end of the world as we know it? Do you realize? it's My life is difficult, okay? <laughs> All right. uh, Joseph is here and says, howdy. Because he's a cowboy. On a steel. All right. No, we're, we're not going to sing. Um, he's wanted to. All right. Uh, <laughs> Heidi says, why did you point to the be kind after you saw my comment? Is that a hint to me, Dean? Maybe. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying it seemed like you and Aaron were getting in a fight the other day. I'm glad you were holding hands, but you can hold hands and fight at the same time. I mean, just talk to any of those UFC guys. I'm, uh, is it overuse of the Zoom? <laughs> is this too much? I don't know. We're having fun. Uh, David says the real championship was yesterday. Uh, I watched it. Uh, I've been watching Caitlin Clark. Uh, what a player. What a player. Uh, she's She is impressive. Um, I was, I, was, I got to say I was a little disappointed. She just kept on jacking it up at like Steph level, like, like a foot away from half court. It's like, you really don't need to be doing that all the time. Like maybe, maybe, maybe drive a little bit more. Um, but you know, that's the way it is. Carol says, how is your boys, Dean? Uh, my boys are good. You know, back in school, spring break is over. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's over. So that's great. Uh, we got one little guy still in the house because he's too little to go to school. So he's napping right now. Um, but they're doing really good. Uh, let's see. Aaron says we're apart today. I'm at work, but we're both looking up at the same moon. Oh, some, oh no, you got me. <laughs> Somewhere out there. All right. Um, <laughs> Sam says the Zoom is GIF worthy. Is it? <laughs> it's so fun. I can't help it. Uh, and Sam says representing Iowa, the Hawkeyes. Um. Uh, is it like come on we know it's all about the corn down there i don't know what you guys are talking about hawks i've been to iowa there's no hawks there (laughs) uh heidi says lol fighting while holding hands is next level marriage we don't have xp for that yet experience for that um that's actually true (laughs) That's that's a solid point right there you know what all right, all right, all right. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe even some dollars. All right, y'all. Let's let's talk about the craziness. Today is like it's fun. It's fun to giggle about. But there are so many people right now who are literally expecting something to happen today. And I got to say it ain't going to happen. <laughs> like there there is all kinds of conspiracies that are going on out there there are people coming out of the woodwork with all kinds of theories because of this solar eclipse and if you are like me you're wondering where did all this come from like why why are we getting so just obsessed with all of a sudden all of us are like you know what astronomy is pretty cool (laughs) like that would have been we should have done the zoom then it's too late now It's too late now, but astronomy is pretty cool. And, uh, so we're all obsessed with it 
And Christians seem to be the ones that are the most obsessed. Like some people are like, this is exciting. You know, North America, we don't get to see this too often. So this is really cool. People are putting on their their little uh, John Lennon glasses and they're going outside and, you know, staring at the sun. But don't do it without it. Apparently, I don't know. I'm not doing that. Are you serious? Like, I ain't going to see anything. <laughs> But, you know, there are people who are excited about that, and that's cool for them. But Christians are excited for completely different reasons. (laughs) Like they, They are saying that today is either the rapture is happening, that's a thing that's out there, or it's the beginning of the spiritual rapture, which as a student of theology and Christian history is just hilarious to me. Because that's happened so often (laughs) where where someone's like, you know what? Jesus is coming back today. Today he's coming back. But if he doesn't, he came back spiritually. It was it was a spiritual rapture. And uh, the true church. Now we're in the tribulation. uh, uh, Oh, it's not seven years. It's actually 37 years. And uh, well, it's a spiritual tribulation. And, uh, you know, like they, they just do that. They just go into complete allegory. They're super serious and everything is a physical thing. It's, it's all literal. And then all of a sudden when it doesn't happen, they, you know, pivot and, uh, they go right into like this spiritual meaning for stuff. It's happened over and over again throughout like the last 200 years specifically. Um, it's weird. It's weird. All right. We've got, we've got people like, let's, let's take a look at some of these things. We got, uh, Everyone's favorite politician, Marjorie Taylor Greene. I know she's your favorite. Oh, I don't have the zoom on this one. (laughs) We can go back here. I know she's your favorite. Um, But (laughs) she said, God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. Earthquakes and eclipses and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. All right, so a little bit of a threat there. <laughs> like that something is disastrous. Like disaster is coming unless we repent. And these are the signs that God has given us. Now, I will say, like we'll get into the reasons why I think some of this stuff happens. I don't think that's a terrible message <laughs> as far as like should you repent of sin? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, the Bible talks a lot about that. Um, Should you trust in God? Wouldn't it be great if everyone in the country, I'm in Canada, so I'm talking about up here, you guys are talking about down there, but if everyone in the country repented of their sin, trusted in Christ as their Savior, yeah, that would be pretty great. Uh, But, you know, coming from Marjorie Taylor Greene, who you could find all kinds of clips uh, of her being a complete hypocrite. All right, I'm not talking about politics. Although, I don't have the zoom on this one. I keep on doing it. (laughs) But, like, I'm I'm not a fan of her politics. Uh, But also just, like, spiritually speaking, like, as a Christian, this ain't it. This ain't it. She, She has shown herself to be a hypocrite and doing all kinds of mean, awful things to other, even, even other, like, people in the house. Like, she, she's... She's incredibly rude to all kinds of politicians, doesn't act charitably at all. So as far as like Christian ethics, you shouldn't be getting your theology from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But, you know, she's she's not the only one who's doing it. We got we got spiritual leaders. Oh, yeah. Spiritual leaders like Sean Fuked. Every time that profile. Take off the Sonics jersey. All right? That's my team. You don't get to wear it. You don't get to put on a Sonics jersey and go around and be like talking all about this wackadoo stuff. You sully the good name of the Seattle Supersonics. All right. uh, Sean Fugt, he tweeted this. Will people in America wake up to the eclipses, earthquakes, and historical light lightning strikes? He dropped. Come on. Again, I'm not like the spelling guy, but dang. Lighting strikes are happening with a matter of days from each other. With a matter of days from each other. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Look at it, guys. 
Uh, I would love for someone to actually like. I didn't look this up, so maybe maybe this did happen just the last couple of days. I think it'd be hilarious if this picture was like thirty years old. <laughs> maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, you know, we don't got any fact checkers here at Underdog Theology, <laughs> but he he put it out there and he's like, look. This is God saying that America's gonna burn, and and here's again the proof of the the solar eclipse. It's just, what does this mean? Why why do Christians keep on doing this, where they're they're using this stuff and they're putting it out there, and we all know that today literally nothing is going to happen. All right now. What was that? Did I click on something? I don't know. But I'm saying that nothing is going to happen because God talks about that. He says that literally no one knows the hour of Jesus' return. All right, so that that doesn't mean necessarily that there's like, if there's a guy out there, there's probably some guy, he's just like, today's the day, and he says that every day. And eventually that guy's going to be right. But like, I think what Jesus is saying there is that it's going to happen at some point where you're not going to have like this broadcast message uh, of this is the day you're not going to have a solar eclipse it's going to be like this is the day of Jesus's return and like the idea that that they can forecast that and then be able to make money off of it and then be able to grow their platform because of it because they know this thing I think that's that's what we're talking about as far as nobody knows the hour. All right. When you start saying like you could broadcast this thing. Now, there was a guy a couple years ago um, who talked about, uh, what was it, the 21st of May? Uh, this What's that guy's name? You guys probably remember. It's like Phillips or something like that. There was like all these messages everywhere. It was on billboards all over the place. Jesus is coming back this day and we could all know that that's false because of that scripture passage no one knows the hour of his return no one knows when it's going to happen so if you're coming out and you're saying i know you're contradicting jesus so you're not you're not accurate so these guys though they they don't care about that sean fuked marjorie taylor green they're not theologians they aren't they they aren't serious people <laughs> they're just out there trying to get their message out but there are people who are Christians who care about Jesus and get kind of just swept up in this thing. Now, some of us know those people, right? Like there there's like I've made this joke so many times that every church has like probably two of these guys that just like meet pastor after every service and like Israel, something's going on with Israel this week, and we need to talk about it, Pastor. You know, dedicate a Sunday evening service. We got to talk about Israel because of this thing, right? Like it happens all the time. Every church has a couple people like that. But like, are they like Marjorie Taylor Green? Are they like Sean Fuked? I don't think so. I think that they're passionate and they got swept up in something. And I think that there are a couple factors that kind of lead into this stuff and make you go like, all right, why do Christians get so wrapped up in the eclipse? Why do Christians get like they sound? Let's be real. Okay. Sometimes Christians sound really stupid with this stuff. Are they like the world just like looks at us and says like, what idiots? Like they're, they're saying this is going to happen or that's going to happen. There are some reasons for this stuff. Why Christians say it. One like, let's be, let's be real about this. You know, I want to talk about craziness. Craziness happens in the Bible, All right, There's some crazy stuff in the Bible. All right. We've got the sun literally stopping. All right. That's what the word of God says. It literally stops. Like God stops the sun from spinning. Like that's crazy. We've got, we've got giants in the old Testament. That's crazy. We've got, we've got a story, regardless of what you believe about it. Many people would take, uh, the ark in the flood to be literal. And we've got, of course, the garden, we've got talking snakes. We've got 
crazy stuff in the Bible, not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament too. We've got people being raised from the dead. Our whole religion is based off of one man saying that he was God and proving it by raising himself from the dead. All right. That's crazy. But we believe it. So like the there are like some things you got to you got to be at least a little bit charitable with some of the crazy wackadoos out there when they start going off about how this is going to happen and this is going to happen and you're thinking in your head this guy's crazy the bible's kind of crazy so so like it's true i believe it i think most of you who are here in the chat believe it too but we've got a lot of craziness in there so if that's in there then why can't it be this eclipse is a sign of this and that and this and the blood moons and the red heifer and all that kind of stuff. Why can't that be true? That's that's where some of this comes from. All right. That, that's that's the jump that some people make. Some Christians make is, well, we've got crazy stuff in the Bible. So this crazy thing might be accurate. And I don't think that most of the time those th people are right. But you can see where they would jump off to that conclusion. Another reason that Christians kind of give into this stuff is that it confirms our faith, right? Like not just in like what we just talked about is that it's in the Old Testament. We see crazy stuff happen. So why not uh, crazy stuff here? But if miracles like this happen, if prophecies can be true about political things that Trump's going to come in with a, I don't know, flying on a freaking eagle, and he's going to like hand deliver a new constitution to the 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 to the Senate. I don't know. He's where is he flying? He's not going Mount Doom. Maybe, <laughs> but, but he's he's this prophecy is out there, and it's he's coming in, and he's gonna you know save America. I guess you know whatever. Like the it, it confirms what we already think, right? Like you you like Trump. That's what that is. Right. Like that's that's why you would have that prophecy and believe in something like that is because you already think that that's true. So for Christians thinking that, all right, well, they they believe in a pre-trib, like before the tribulation or rapture happening and it all being literal. And that that begins this seven year like hiatus of the church where we're gone, we're we're raptured up. Well, if you believe that, then you're going to be looking for signs for it, right? And when you see things that you think are signs, it's just going to make you think that you're on the right trail. Like, you're just like, oh, of course, of course, Israel would be in a war right now. That makes so much sense, <laughs> right? Like, and you're just like, oh, okay, but they've been in a war how many times? Like, you know, it's the same thing back in the Seven Day War where all the Christians were like, this is happening. And I remember even as a kid watching those videos on like, I don't even know. It's like UPN. No, that's a different one. What was it? It was like some like USA network. I don't, I don't know. That's that's psych and monk and stuff. There was some Christian TV station and they would go through and they would have these stories of these miraculous things that would happen of these soldiers chase this one guy into this cave during the seven day war. And then a bunch of angels went up and got them. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, Oh, it's just proof of what God is doing through Israel. And it's like, is that true? Well, there's no one else who has like, it's just this one guy who said this thing happened. Right. And it's just like, ah, but it confirms something that they already think. And it makes you feel like what you believe is true. We seek a sign, Right. Like we are people who seek a sign. We want our religion, our belief system. And people get mad when I talk about Christianity as a religion. It means a belief system, all right? Something you believe, like you want it to be true. And so you start trying to get these things that you can see and you can point to and bring it in as proof for yourself. And so you're looking at things and trying to make it into something that would fit. That's something that happens for Christians and why they might get swept up in something as ridiculous as an eclipse that happened back in 2017, y'all. All right, this ain't this ain't the first time. <laughs> like this this happened just a few years ago. And we're just like, now is it we weren't having these conversations then, though. That's interesting. We'll talk about that here in a minute. 
Another part of this, I think, is like the cultural norm of dispensationalism. And like I said, the pre-trib rapture stuff that people just have this ingrained into this is what Christianity believes. Part of that is like the popularity of things like left behind. We said it. Oh, man. Not just Kirk Cameron, but the books. There are books. Uh, and those books were really popular. And they went all over the place. And it wasn't just Christians who were reading these things. It got so big that Hollywood, not not Angel Studios, you know, not some, some little rink-a-dink studio getting together and doing a GoFundMe to get some money together to put out a movie. And then it'd be like total just garbage because of the quality of the thing. All right. Um, I, I know some of you guys are like, Angel Studios is so good now. Okay. Fine, whatever. Uh, but it wasn't like that. We had big budget studios coming in being like, this is so popular that we think we could build a franchise off this thing. It didn't do great, but that's how popular this belief system is of dispensationalism. It got so ingrained into our culture today that I think a lot of people just assume that's what all Christians believe. And so like, and they're Christians and so they believe it. And they haven't really studied it, but they've heard it and they saw the Kirk Cameron movie. So now they think that this is the way to go. So I think that's part of it. Another part of it, people aren't going to like me for this one. This is going to be, are you ready for the hot take? You ready for the hot take? It's this. All right. The hot take is that God has called the foolish. And you might be like, that's what the Bible says. All right. But what I mean by that is that there are a lot of weirdo Christians all right, because God has called the foolish because God uses weird people. And sometimes those weird people aren't just weird about Jesus. All right, that's what we assume. We just we just go like, oh, that's what that scripture passage means. Uh, it's about the foolish and it's just the foolishness of the cross. No, that's Paul makes some distinctions there. He He talks about the foolishness of the cross, but he also talks about the strong in the world, like the, the super intelligent and the foolish. And I think that there are a lot of Christians that maybe are not the most, they're not intellectuals. All right. They're not going to be sitting back in a, you know, uh, a room. I'm thinking of like right response ministries, like their studio with like all the leather and they're not going to be smoking their cigars and being like, I want to talk about uh, quantum theory, <laughs> you know, like it's no offense to Christians. There are a lot of smart Christians out there, but the Bible does say that there are, there are some foolish people that believe in Christianity and God uses that. I used to be like, this is, this, that was one of the hard things for me to get over as a Christian it is just like, why do we have so many people that are just so weird? But then I realized I'm weird. <laughs> I have, I have an internet show in my basement called underdog theology i'm a little bit of a weirdo all right <laughs> like it's it's just the way it is it's the way god wired me and god uses that 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 something within us that we feel like we need something and we realize that we do actually need something and that something is jesus we need the gospel and god uses that wiring that we have to bring us to himself all right. They're, they're like, it's why Jesus says it's very hard for a rich man to enter into heaven. Why? Because they feel like they don't need anything. They're fully self-sufficient. They have no need, but broken people, they feel their need. And broken people are usually broken, not just because of, you know, something going on in their, their personal life, but sometimes because of who they are as a person. All right. Uh, God is called the foolish and some of the foolish are going to believe these weird aspects like these, these fringe, maybe, maybe Christian adjacent theories that are out there. They might be get more swept into it. Uh, and then lastly, we've got some deceivers. All right. We've got some deceivers among us. We've got people who are pushing this stuff and they're preying on maybe some of the more foolish among us, uh, maybe some of the people that haven't been taught other things. Maybe they've just absorbed, 
you know, this pre-trib dispensational theology and they, and they haven't thought through maybe some other aspects of theology. I'm not saying like every pre-trib dispensational person is going to be there. I was there. I was never like this. But I'm just saying like maybe there are some Christians who are more, you know, in tune with that or even now this like cartoonish version of postmillennialism. Like there are people who get swept up into that kind of stuff and they get swept up because there are people who are pushing them and there are people that they are watching, that they are listening to and they're, they're getting, you know, all of this shoved on them. Now for years, it was people like John Hagee. Pause for dramatic effect. This coming solar eclipse is visible proof that God Almighty created heaven and earth and is in total control of what's happening in the planet and on, and on planet earth. The Bible says that God calls the stars by name, that he holds the seven seas in the palms of his hand, and he's sending this solar eclipse on April 8th tomorrow to warn the body of Christ to prepare for the rapture of the church. Wait for it. Rapture! I wouldn't tell you something that uh, bold if I didn't have a strong Bible foundation for it. And here it is, Luke 21, 25. The Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's going to be tomorrow. And then there will be signs in the moon. That's the four blood moons that have already happened about which I wrote this book that sold over a million copies in a very short period of time. The four blood moons and the stars. So a lot of you guys know who this guy is. He's a pastor, was a pastor. I don't think he still is uh, down in Texas. He started a ministry, based his entire ministry off of prophecy. And he started writing these books and he's talking about how, oh, this means that this means that. And, you know, all these people got swept up in it for some of the reasons here, but also because he sounds like he's right. Right. At least that's what they think. Now, some of you guys might be watching and going, I would. Why would any of us? <laughs> why would any of us think this guy was right? But he's he sounded like he was right. He was talking about the Bible and he was twisting scripture to his own means. And that means is selling a million copies. All right. Uh, in this seven minute clip, we're not going to watch it all because it's annoying as heck. All right. But <laughs> I can't stand this guy. <laughs> but uh, in this seven minute clip, he plugs his book three times. All right. And says, oh, you, you could hear all about the blood moons and this thing. He's just like, what? Well, that's what he bases his whole ministry off of. It's a nonprofit, by the way, and he gets all this money from these book sales, these million. It's it's why all these guys make YouTube videos and they and they they do the thing to get millions of views and they put it as extreme as possible. Guys, just watch. All right, I'm having fun with it today, but there are going to be so many Christian YouTubers that talk about what does the solar eclipse mean? Right. And YouTube's going to come and find you and let you know about all of them because you're a Christian. Like because you watch some of this stuff. Because you watch this stream even and it has the eclipse in it. I'm sorry I did this to you guys. <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. Because there are so many people who are in this religion for money, for the business of it. And there are some people who can get by and they don't look like they are, right? Like some of the big Eva types, some of them. All right, they're, they're out there, they're writing their articles, they're selling their books, and some of them, I firmly believe, don't believe a word of it. All right, but it's their business. All right, there, there are others, obviously many, who do, and they're like this. it's not to say that everyone who sells a book is in for the money, but I am saying that some of them are. And sometimes it's obvious, and sometimes it's not. With those people, maybe not so obvious. With guys like this, maybe a little bit more obvious. And they're selling these books and they have all these programs, you know, come to our seminar so you can learn how to be, you know, more discerning when it comes to these prophecies or buy my books or watch these videos. And don't forget to become a patron. And if you become a patron, 
You're going to unlock all kinds of keys that are going to help you to understand what's really happening today. Because there's a darkness. There's a certain YouTuber right now that keeps on using that. There's a darkness that's here. Be specific, bud. (laughs) All right? Be specific. (laughs) What do you mean a darkness? Well, it's just a threat so that you can be like, hey... You should, you know, be a part of what I'm trying to do. And I could give you more information so that you can know how to live your life. Guys, if I wasn't here, I think y'all would be fine. (laughs) Like maybe you wouldn't have the community that we've built here on the channel, but I think you guys would be able to figure out your Christian life. All right. I'm having fun doing this channel, but it's not, I'm not, I'm not thinking like you'd be lost without me. (laughs) All right. Like there, there, I think a lot of people out here. They think so. John Hackey, you got to buy my book about the blood moons, about the blood moons. Now, this is just today, right? Like there, there, there's this thing that's going on specifically with the solar eclipse and like they're, they're talking about it and they're saying like, this is everything that we see in scripture. Let me, let me just take you to the scripture passage that they're talking about. And that is right here in Luke chapter 21. All right, this is this is the reference that even John Haggy goes into detail about. All right, so let's just look at this. Uh, then he told them, this is Jesus talking. That's why it's red. Kind of pinkish. I'm, I'm sure some people would be like, see, the CSB is effeminate. It's not, it's not bright red. <laughs> nation will be raised up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be violent earthquakes and famines and plagues in various places. And there will be terrifying sights. And here's where they go with today. Great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. That was everything going on in 2020. or Because uh, everything is only about North America. Uh, they will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. 2020. This will give you an opportunity to bear witness. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense ahead of time, for I will give you such words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will even be betrayed by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. 2020. They will kill some of you. They will. Uh, you will be hated by everyone because of my name, but not a hair of your head. Bald guys, too. You're a part of this. Will be lost. By your endurance, gain your lives. So people are going to take this and this is where they're going to jump from and be like, oh, so today this this really matters because we see it. Great signs from heaven. Well, first off, Jesus is not talking necessarily to you. All right. I know this sounds shocking, but the Bible was written to a specific audience. And when we talk about some of these narratives, Jesus is talking to certain people. Who is he talking to? The apostles. What's going to happen to the apostles? Oh, they're going to be chased. <laughs> like Most of them are going to be killed. Uh, John survives, but according to like uh, at least what people think happened, like oral tradition is that he was boiled in oil and then exiled on Patmos where he wrote Revelation. Sounds super great, right? Super fun. Like, oh, it's so exciting. All these signs and wonders. This is scary stuff. And they were going to have to live it. That's who Jesus is talking to. And then also we got, let's go into context. All right. So this is just before. All right. Signs of the end of the age. That's not Bible. That's just what they put in there. Teacher, they asked him. So when will these things happen? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? Then he said, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he and the time is near. Sounds familiar to what some people are saying right now. Don't follow them. Says Jesus, not me. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. Indeed, it is necessary that these things take place first, but the end won't come right away. All right. So these people who are trying to prey on Christians, other Christians, and say like, hey, you know, this is the end. This is the end. Buy my books. You know, be a part of, you know, what I'm trying to build here. Follow me on social media for more of this stuff. Jesus says, don't follow them because they're literally saying these these things. The time is near. They're saying right now it is near. Now, Paul does say that the time is near. At some point, Jesus is going to come back. And Paul thought that he was living in the end times. Now, he was wrong. 
uh, by a couple thousand years, <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> but, you know, like that, it is something that will happen. But these people who are saying like right now and they're like trying to gain a following, like that's why Jesus says, don't follow them. Like when people are using this stuff, not to warn you about like, hey, you need to you need to repent of your sin, trust in Christ. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, the, the time is short. Today is the day of salvation. That's a gospel message. But when you're saying, hey, follow me or give me money or buy my books, buy my products, be a part of my congregation because the end is near. Like that's that's when you start going, I think Jesus has something to say about this. Uh, I don't think this is the way I should go. But they want to take this passage and they want to talk about that first part about the signs and wonders in heaven. But they don't want to deal with what Jesus said right before then. Right. It's always that they never give the context for that passage. They always jump to signs and wonders in heaven and earthquakes and stuff like that. And here, you know, we got a lightning strike on the Statue of Liberty. We've got we've got earthquakes in Pennsylvania or wherever it was, New Jersey. We've we've got, uh, you know, we've got an evil government because it's a Democrat, you know, or we, we got we got the, the solar eclipse and it's all coming together. Isn't it quite the coincidence? This stuff has happened before. People, random people, were saying it back back in the day. 1979, I think, was the last like one that wasn't the 2017 one of the solar eclipse. And people were saying it then. They just didn't have the internet. And now we have the internet. Now these guys, these wackadoos, can go and they can make all their stuff and put it out there. It's a shame. It's a shame. And it's not just about the solar eclipse, though. And like I said, I think that there are many reasons. You know, the crazy things happen in the Bible, confirms our beliefs, cultural norm of dispensationalism. God is called the foolish. And we have deceivers among us. I guess I took notes today. Um, <laughs> but there are also some weirdos who are out there trying to make a buck off of not just that. Because there's also this other thing that's happening right now. Not just within Christianity, but this is more about just culture in general, where people are getting more and more extreme. And we have this, this online culture where we have people who are shoving all kinds of conspiracies down our throats. So I think this is like adjacent to this conversation about like the solar eclipse and Christians and tribulation and rapture and like all that kind of stuff. I think it's like adjacent to that, to where it's not quite this, but it is pretty similar and that is this online culture about like just extremism, you know, so whatever take you have, it needs to be the most extreme take or, you know, just saying that you believe something isn't enough. You have to believe the most extreme version of that. And part of that is like ideologies that aren't really having to do with anything about Christianity. And but people will try to make it part of it because they could use it. Uh, I always think back of uh, in the rise and fall of Mars Hill the way that they describe Mark Driscoll as rocket fuel for the Gospel Coalition. That's what some of these crazy theories are for some Christians. And they might not have anything to do with actual Christianity, but they want to use it as rocket fuel to be able to gain more and more of a following. And part of that, I'll say it, it's weird. It's mermaids. Yep. <laughs> All right, so this is... Uh, the Right Response Ministries YouTube channel uh, where they had this conversation the other day and they got me with the thumbnail and the title because the lost city of Atlantis was just found. Great topic for a Christian theology channel. Uh, seems seems very much... No, it doesn't. Like, what? what is this? <laughs> like, what? Big yikes. No, no, this doesn't seem right. And so I started watching... You know, it was already toward the end of the stream. I haven't gone back and watched the other part. All right, so I know it's far, but I didn't spend this much time on it. Uh, <laughs> but watch, watch what they say here, okay? Just, just listen to some of this. As, oh, <laughs> as I ruin things, let me put this back over here. All right, we're good. We're good. Let's watch. People had an unbelievable ability to machine stone in a way that 
not only rivals, but usually exceeds mm. our capability of machining aluminum <clears throat> today. Wow. That's a stock. About that's almost years more ago. impressive to me than the pyramid that, that they were underneath of, that they were underneath. That sounds like a fallen angel father. That's what I'm saying. Told you how to do something. Like some kind of what? great <laughs> skill set that was passed along right. with a with a technology that we can't that, that we can't imagine. Right. The fallen angel father. But also you, it, you it, are right, because I don't want to discount your other like think nine hundred years to perfect your craft. Right. You're Adam. Right. And you knew the world before it was fallen. Right. I mean, that like Adam, people think of Adam as like a, a, a great grandpa who's walking around. Like Adam Wait was a king. It. Yeah. Adam, I mean, Weird. he would have, everybody comes from him. So every, he's related to everybody. So he's got great, 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 great grandchildren. But, um, but the, the, it's not just like, hey, great, great grandpa. It's King Adam. They bow if they get to see Adam. Like, so, that because he, he's walked with God. He, I mean, you know, yeah, it's just it's amazing to think of that 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 antediluvian world with giants and dragons and maybe mermaids. It's, <laughs> it's so different that doesn't probably hate. mermaids, but honestly, <clears throat> let's be honest, they're fairies. And you'll have to watch the fairy like Mermaids in some way. Yeah. I think mermaids would be in the category of Bigfoot. Yeah. I, like like a fairy type thing. That's where that's where I would lean. I, I think that mermaids are real. Which uh, is a particular kind of demon. An elemental spirit kind of... I'm calling them element angels or element angels. Mm. <laughs> Is that the I'm new Pixar movie? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but let's be honest. They're, they're, they're more like fairies. <sighs> this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Guys, this, this video will get more views than them talking about Calvinism. Right. That's why they're doing it. That's why they have their little podcasts like the the Ogden guys. Like they have a podcast about like this kind of supernatural, weird, like fairy tale stuff um, because they got bored of theology. And uh, so they're just going to roll with this. It's it's about gaining a following. And they're using these weird, weird out there theories and like maybe mermaids are real. <laughs> maybe mermaids are real and fairies are real and i mean if we were to categorize bigfoot into one of these he's he's more of a fairy than he is a dragon i don't know <laughs> like that's where we're at to try to gain a following i don't know if these guys actually believe what they're saying or not but regardless this is just weird it is bizarre it is just completely false, by the way. All, all like in all of them talking about like, oh, the, they're talking about electricity before, um, you know, before the flood and, and talking about the world before the fall. And Adam was a king. Where do we see that in scripture? Where do we see mermaids in scripture? I can't believe it's not a sentence I thought I'd be saying. <laughs> Where do we see mermaids in scripture? But where do we see this bowing down to Adam? Because he walked with God, which is uh, Paul Washer right there. Joel Webin has watched a lot of Paul Washer and you could hear it by how he says God. Um, it's all it is, is them trying to gain a following. They're using the extremism of today and like the, like, the popularity of conspiracy theories to propel them forward. That's what they're doing. It's what John Hagee did back in the day with all this astronomy and adding that into calculations for like this pre-trib rapture. It's what they're doing. They're just, they're just sounding like wackadoos while they do it, <laughs> like even crazier. But, you know, there are people that are out there that are like, you know what, maybe Atlantis was real. And if it was real, what would it look like? And maybe it's connected to the Nephilim. And that's why those guys over there at Right Response Ministries are going to talk about the Nephilim. And they're going to have a whole series of videos on it of an obscure passage that most theologians would say it's actually about, like, the descendants of Seth uh, or descendants, uh, yeah, uh, the son, sons of God being the descendants of Seth, uh, that 
And they're like, no, it can't be that. It has to be angels. And it's not to say like that theory hasn't been out there. But why do you make a whole series of videos on it as if this is this very important thing? Well, they're going to say it is because it's how we understand the world. And we see that demons are real. Don't you believe that demons are real? And if they were real, they'd be mermaids. Or Bigfoot. <laughs> There's a Bigfoot demon out there. Um, but they're element tangles, which again, I think is Pixar's next movie <laughs> i can make a movie off of that i'll write the script but that's what these guys do because it's again using some of these things that are there in christianity like that there there are i wouldn't say weaknesses but there are there are soft spots within christianity amongst christians of where we could be targeted and they're preying on those targets. They're preying on those soft spots and trying to bring them into all this stuff. <sighs> what is that? I don't know what that is. We got some people in the chat. Jer, can you see there seems to be some stuff. I don't know why I can't click on some things. If I've got some moderators, maybe put someone in timeout or something. I can't. I don't know why my buttons aren't working here. Um, but all right. We can't do the penalty box today because, I don't know, tech is being weird. All of my tech, apparently. Let me try. If I do it that way, why can't I do it? If I go to my channel, just a minute. <laughs> It's gonna, is there gonna be noise? There might be noise. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, sorry about all that. Let's go to Fundyville. And bring it on down to Fundy. All right, this is not a fun one. We've had fun today. Uh, we've been talking about all this craziness and having fun, uh, but this one isn't so fun. All right, so we're, we're there's going to be some words that if you have little ears around, I always like to say that because you never know. I would appreciate if someone was talking about this kind of stuff and my kids were around. <clears throat> but I think this is serious and something we need to discuss. Now... Here's some facts. It's a lot safer for a kid to be in a Sunday school class here than it is for a kid to be in his own home. Because 55% of all child sex abuse offenses occur in the child's own home. And the majority of those are in the child's own bedroom at night, in the child's own bed when he's asleep. Are you with me? Amen. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to attack something, why don't you go after the parents rather than the pastor? At least the pastor preaches against it. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, I may not always live it, and pastors fall. Are you with me? But anyway, 55% of the time, child is sexually molested in his own home, 12% of the time in a relative's home, and 68% of those times, they're abused by a family member, especially stepfathers, adopted fathers, cousins, second cousins of that nature. It's tragic. But if you're going to expose something, if you're going to save somebody, here you got a building over here with one person in it, and you can save these, this person over here, or you've got another building over here with 500 that's burning in that building, and you can save the one in that building, you can save the 500. Everybody's going to go to that one. Well, why don't you go where it's the most prevalent? In the homes, amen. That's why moms need to be saved. That's why dads need to be saved. That's why mom and dad need to stay together, amen, and build their home upon the rock of God's word, amen. That's why I've been preaching here for 30 years. Amen. Anyway, when it comes to sexual abuse, 
I'd rather my kid be in Sunday school than in that school right back there. This uh, is it's worse there oh. than it is here. This is the kind of stuff that just gets me furious. <laughs> because he's making this false dichotomy. One, he's he's basing it like there is truth to that. Like if you look at percentages, like sure. <laughs> Wouldn't you, uh, it's obvious that it would happen more often when it's home, like a child is home than at a church, at a local church. Of course, that's the case. Just like, I mean, how much time, hours do you spend at home versus at the church? Like, of course, it's going to be less of a percentage. Uh, and of course, like it's going to be more family members. Uh, who who would be the the abuser in uh, for these victims? Of course, that's the case. But if we were to do a comparison between different community related uh, areas, like if we were to go to like, let's compare the grocery store versus the church versus the community rec center. All right, and we were to look at those categories. And say when a child is abused, like let's look at the percentages there. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the stats would be, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be comparable. It would be the church, uh, because there is a real problem of abuse within the church. And when you start saying things like this, let's go after the parents. Like first off, yes, <laughs> yes, let's go after the parents. But why does that mean we can't go over here as well? First off, the parents, it's far less likely to be like known because again, it's at the home. It's in a private place where, you know, there might not be a way unless that child says something or shows something like that. We would know that that's happening in the home, right? Like this, it's far less likely to be discovered by someone else that isn't in the home regularly. So it's not like we can know that as much. It's a lot more likely to be found out in some place like a church. So it's not to say like when that, that he puts it in this category of like a house is on fire and there's 500 people there and one child here. Like, are you saying that God doesn't care about this one kid? Is that what you're trying to say? Or when people, and I've had this happen, I've had this happen at business meetings. I got real mad. <laughs> at some business meetings where I was trying to implement some child safety guidelines for a church and someone stands up and says, Oh, that's so unlikely to happen here. Well, cool. Uh, let's still have it. <laughs> and, uh, I won't, yeah, I won't go into details about that. Let's just say that guy had a reason for why he said it. And I kind of knew, uh, like as soon as he said it, I'm like, ah, I think I know something about it. Uh, but like, all right, even if it's less likely, let's let's still have some guidelines here. All right, let's still put windows in those doors for the Sunday school. Let's still have it to where there's two adults for every Sunday school class. And we don't have kids on a in a one-on-one -on -one scenario at in a like windowless room in the basement of the church. Like let's let's try to get this stuff figured out because there might be that one kid that we need to protect and save from this awful stuff happening to them. And yes, there might be 500 that we'll never know about, but you know, if we do find out, let's do something about those things. Let's do whatever we can as far as accountability within the church. So we know what is happening at people's homes and we can maybe have at least some kind of warning to know like this is where, we need to focus or we need to have some discussions here. There's, I saw this kid had a bruise and it looked really weird. And I want to talk about that with their parents. Maybe if we know them well enough, we can, we could have those conversations and maybe something could be solved here, but we can make sure that we do everything within our power to call out abuse within the local church. When we know it's a problem, we know it's a bigger problem than stuff happening at a grocery store. We know it's a bigger problem than happening probably at a rec center. Like we know it's a bigger problem because of the authority that's attached within a church and specifically with pastors 
Like they get to have a lot of authority in the life of everyone within the church, which if they're qualified elders, they deserve that authority. God has given them that authority, not to be a jerk and rule and to be some, some pastors take it way too far, but God has that uh, in place for a reason. But some of these guys, they aren't qualified elders. Like, especially if they're doing these things, he talks about like, you know, pastors fall, you know what they don't do? They don't immediately fall for their kids. Right? Or kids within the church? There's other crap that's going on. These people are not, you know, oh, one one day they were a good pastor and next day they fell. They just fell into some sin. It's not like that. Not with this specific sin. There's other stuff that always leads up to that. And there's a whole bunch of different, like there's a whole path of sin uh, in, in the wake, just all kinds of debris. And so it doesn't doesn't just happen like that. But let's take care of what we can. How about that? We do it as we can find out about what's happening in the home and in the public school. All right, that is a problem in the public school. Like when we find out about stuff, let's deal with it and call it out. But also when it happens with a senior pastor or anyone on staff at a church, let's call it out too. And it's a lot easier for us as Christians to call that out because it's so much more obvious when this stuff happens because, you know, there's more people walking around in the church building right? Than at the home. There, there's more eyes on different ministries. That's a good thing. It's a good thing that this thing gets found out. It's not a good thing when it's covered up because don't you be coming after us pastors. It happens more to parents. Let's go after the parents. Let's go after both. <laughs> like it's not a, it's not something we have to pick and choose which ones we do, but it's just, when you start saying stuff like that, it makes me go like there's, you knew about something, you knew about something, you did something, yeah, like maybe you didn't do it, but you didn't know about it. There's always there's always some reason for people when they start getting like this super defensive when it comes to abuse and going like the Internet's just trying to get us all canceled. Well, if you don't have anything in your past, you don't have to get canceled. <laughs> it's not that complicated. But these guys in Fundyville, sometimes they just like. They, they start speaking and they're like, oh, I'm going to be so strong against this thing. And it's like, ah, you just showed your hand, but that's, that's, a, that's all you did. That's all you did. But you know, again, what do I know? Just some guy waiting for the rapture down in my basement. <laughs> I got, well, I got to go put on my robe. I got to go put on my robe and look skyward and hopefully I'll get beamed up. Uh, I don't, if you believe in a preacher of rapture, I don't mean to be like, man. <laughs> I'm just saying like for today with the solar eclipse, that's, it's kind of funny. Um, what was it? The great disappointment back in the 1800s, there was a guy who was saying like, Hey, this is it. Or maybe the early 1900s There's this is it. And they all went off onto a hill in New York and, uh, they sold all their stuff. They got these white robes on and they all waited on a hill in New York to be raptured up. And it's known as the great disappointment because they, they had no money. They had, they had no respect from people because they, they all bought into this thing from this one teacher. And uh, then they just waited around. Maybe some people are going to be having that today. It's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of sad. But also, you know, let's see some TikToks about it. I don't know. <laughs> all right. That's the show today, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've had some fun. We, we've had some serious stuff we talked about there in Funnyville, but we also had some fun. I hope that it was helpful. You know, I get a lot of these questions of like, why do you think it is this? And those are why I think that sometimes Christians give into some of this craziness. And, uh, like I said, I think it's, uh, people preying on some soft spots that we have and, you know, we all have it. We all have like uh, blind spots. We all have things that we're more easily to get swept up into because of our personalities, because of who we are. And Christians, we do have some common traits uh, because of our belief structure. So um, I think that's part of it. Anyways, uh, I will see you later on in the week. I do want to do another stream where hopefully we don't have all the tech issues and I can talk about the Ligon Duncan video uh, that all the... You know, reform guys were like, let's get the pitchforks. Uh, I want to talk about it. I want to defend him a little bit, but also 
he ain't innocent. And I want to, I want, I have, I have a lot of thoughts about that one. So we'll probably be doing a stream later on in the week about that. Uh, we are ramping up. We're ramping up on, uh, what we're going to be doing here on the channel. We're going to be doing more streams, hopefully without the tech issues, uh, some more chill streams, some more tier rankings, some more interviews. And we're going to be trying, we're going to be trying. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, I don't know if anyone wants to come on. Anyways, uh, I will see you in the next one. Guys, hit the like button on your way out. And, uh, well, let's see if this one works. Uh, I'm, I've got, I forgot to get audio for it. But, you know, we're going to have a, an end screen for, you know, click over here and here and here. And I forgot to do the audio. But, anyways, I'll see you in the next one.